Thank you for that. Yeah, it just brought up all those times where Glenda and I have been packing up and moving into a new state or a new district and a, a new church. And uh, uh, as, um, as much as you anticipate it and wonder how it's going to work out, let me tell you something. It really, really uh, uh, puts anxiety in, in, into a pastor and his family. Is there they're coming. Are they going to like me? Is it going to go well? How's the leadership? What am I getting myself into? You, at the same time, you know, it's like, I, I, I can't wait to get started. God has a call for me. This is going to... So, so there's, there, there's, there's trepidation when you, uh, when a pastor comes in as well. So uh, I know you're going to embrace him. I know you're, that he's going to be here for a long time. Apparently he has family here, doesn't he? Or in Bullhead City. So good, good news. Anyway, it's been a long wait for you guys. Again, congratulations. I, I've been, I was congratulating people in the hall before the official announcement, and uh, I, I kept asking, are you sure that, that, that this is real? Because I, I, I was part of the rumor mill this morning. So, yeah. Oh, one more thing. Uh, you guys are, are going to be doing uh, Sunshine in 2021. Is that my... That is awesome. I, I would say give yourselves a hand, but you haven't tried it yet. <laughs> uh, first I thought it was 2020, which meant that you should have been, been already preparing two months ago. But uh, uh, it's, it, uh, we just finished one in a Mesa. I've, I've done several. We did Pathways to Health. I, I, I tell you, it brings a church together, and you will make an enormous impact in this community. How many, how many organizations do you know had, that have offered two or three days of free medical care on a mass basis here in Kingman? Kingman will not believe that you're doing it. They will keep asking you, why are you doing this? What, what's in it for you? And uh, disinterested service is what Ellen White talked about, and this is probably one of the best examples. So uh, we will be praying for you guys. I, uh, I'm, I'm on a lot of the planning boards. I'll probably be very much involved in this one. If you could, within this next year, move Kingman at least an hour and a half closer to Phoenix. <laughs> That'll help me enormously. It may not help you, but it'll help me. So with that in mind, let's pray. Let's talk. Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father, we can focus on your grace, on your presence, and on your love for us. And we lift this up in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This is a, uh, a true story. It uh, takes place, oh, 1610, and it's Galileo, people know, inventor of the telescope, astronomer, and Galileo is just starting his, uh, uh, his whole career, brand new, right out of school, barely, he hadn't even developed a telescope yet. And Johannes Kepler is over in Prague, and another astronomer, Kepler, uh, discovered the laws of planetary motion and all these really cool things, but he's been at it for a while, and Kepler is a rock star in that field right now. So he is well ahead of his career. He is, he, he, he's in the, uh, uh, the Royal Court in Prague, and Galileo is just coming up. And anyway, they're, Kepler and Galileo are kind of writing back and forth to each other, you know. Uh, Kepler, I'm sure, is thinking, this young upstart, what's he going to, you know, what does he know? He's, he's going to be good. I'll take him under my wing. And anyway, uh, Kepler develops a telescope, and he discovers something. I'm sorry, Galileo. Thank you, Glinda. I have a wife who's heard this story before too many times, <laughs> Galileo actually uh, 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 discovered something. Now, when you discovered something back then, you wanted to let people know that you discovered something, but you wanted to keep it a secret. There were no copyright laws back then. And people, uh, I wish I could tell you that astronomers uh, were also always acting with integrity. They wouldn't rip each other off, but they did all the time. So anyway, so Galileo discovers something. It's a new discovery. No one has ever seen this before, and he wants Kepler to know about it. So he sends him his discovery, but he sends it as a word scramble, an anagram. Anybody do anagrams? Well, they were very popular back then. What an anagram did, first off, it let Kepler know that I got something on you. Secondly, I, I, I've got the key to discover this. And thirdly, I'll tell you when I want to. So he sends Kepler this anagram. 
They said, this is new. You've never heard anything like this before. And so, so Kepler's staff keeps, keeps bugging uh, Galileo, you know. Well, come on, give us the key. Give us the, what is what's going on. And Kepler, or Galileo says, no, no, no problem. Nah, I, I, I will, what I want. He says, no, no, tell us what it means. So finally, Kepler gets very uh, concerned and very impatient. And he says, look, I'm Johannes Kepler. I have discovered the laws of planetary motion. A simple anagram isn't going to stop me. So he's going to decode it. He's going to take this word scramble and he's going to make, he, he, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I can decode this myself. It's not the stuff that, you get, that we get right that beats us up sometimes. But it's the stuff that we get right the wrong way that will absolutely beat us up. Keep that in mind. It's not the stuff that we get right, but it's the stuff that we get right in the wrong way that can confuse us spiritually. So Kepler starts doing all this stuff. He starts uh, uh, re, you know, re, uh, redoing the letters. You, you know how anagrams are. My, my wife does word puzzles all the time. Matter of fact, uh, catch her on Word with Friends on the way out. Okay? Anyway, so, so, so Kepler decodes it himself, and he comes up with what he thinks is a, a, a solution. And he publishes the solution. But he was wrong. He was very wrong. What Galileo was trying to say in Latin, anybody speak Latin here? Oh, good, because I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> what Galileo was trying to say in Latin was Altacinium planetarium targunium observate, which roughly means I've observed the farthest planet, which at that time was Saturn, and it has rings. He was the first guy to discover rings around Saturn because he had this magic eyepiece that he called it, the telescope. That's what he sent uh, oh, Kepler. Well, Kepler came up with a very different anagram. He decoded a thinking with a, it, it was very bad Latin, by the way. He had to wrestle this Latin to make it work out. And he thought that it said that Mars had two moons, Salvele, Universium, Germateum, Marto, Plopes, which is in some sort of half Latin, roughly means hail, double nod, Double knob, children of Mars. Let me say that again. Hail, double knob, children of Mars. Which means Mars must have two moons. I told you this is a true story. This really happened. Now, the truth is, how many moons does Mars have? They wouldn't even know that for 200 years. Isn't that cool? For 200 years. So he publishes it. People are going, wow, Mar uh, 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 Galileo thinks Mars has two moons. And Galileo says, that's not what I'm talking about. But it just kind of rested there. 200 years later, they discovered Mars has two moons. They also, we also know that Saturn has rings around it. So Kepler got lucky, didn't he? It's not what we get right sometimes. It's what we get right in the wrong way that'll mess us up later on. So Kepler got lucky. And a couple months go by, and Kepler gets another anagram from Galileo. Matter of fact, this one starts out with, I looked into my magical eyepiece, and I am not prepared to let anybody know what I found. So I'm giving you another anagram. <sighs> Now what, Kep, now, what Galileo had seen, and what he, he wasn't even willing to, to share with anybody, is he, is he took this telescope and he looked at Venus. And he saw that the planet Venus had, had phases, just like the moon. Full Venus, half Venus, quarter Venus, no Venus. And what that meant, if that was true, it meant that the planets and the sun do not revolve around the earth anymore. And as you can remember from your history, that was a big deal. It got Galileo into a lot of hot water. So he sends an anagram. Kepler kept asking, look, decode it for us. Galileo says, no, I like my job. I like my life. He says, no, really? No, 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 no. <laughs> that's true. By the way. So uh, uh, please, you know, you know, send us someone, give, give, uh, give us a hint. So they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it was really big. And finally, Kepler again says, look, I am Johannes Kepler. I got it right the first time. So we thought, 
I can unscramble this anagram. So he begins the process. He brings a staff in to help him unscramble this anagram. And so what the anagram said, originally was Hayak Imatura Amea Impustra Leganto, which means Vinny says phases. But what Galileo, or what Kepler thought he got was that Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, has a red spot moving mathematically. Now, let me ask you this. Does Jupiter have a red spot that moves? This is a true story. You can look it up. Now, getting two moons on Mars, okay, that's a, that's a stretch. But getting the red spot on Jupiter right by unscrambling an amagran wrong, and they, we, again, we wouldn't know about it for another 200 years. What are the odds of that happening? It's incredible. I love that story. But it's not what we get right that beats us up. It's what we get right in the wrong way. That beats us up. Let me shift gears real quick and just ask a question. This is a long story, and I know you're looking at your watch. How many here need a little bit more patience? Uh, Be honest. Now, how many people have prayed for patience? How many people have prayed that their friends have patience? (laughs) How many people just like more patience in their life? How many people would like more patients driving? Gene, yeah. i got to pick on you. You're driving down the highway, the 75 mile highway. The whole drive up here at 65, we hit that highway at 75, or it's about 85 or something. We can almost, you're, you're driving down there, minding your own business, Highway 40. And all of a sudden, matter of fact, you're, you're, you're in the slow lane, minding your own business, and this truck drives right up behind you. I mean, right on your bumper. You can see the guy in your back seat almost, okay? What do you do? What do you do? Now, there are... Now, with patients, there are two problems. One, there are two problems in this world. I remember reading among the problems. One is, 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 is being so focused and the other lack of patience. I was talking to him. Who answered? Everybody else. Gene, these are the guys following you. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. How many here think they would like more patience? Oh, you and me both. Okay, we have a wind here, don't we? Here we go. I'll just move it around. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. How many people want more? It's not what we get right that beats us up. Bear in mind, it's what we get right the wrong way that beats us up. It's not what, we, what, what we're trying to do. It's what we're trying to do in the wrong way that will, that will just stonewall us spiritually. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be what? Free. <gasps> Land of the free. This is, what, 50 years after Woodstock, when we were all, all your boomers and boomer children were going to be free. Remember that? You were called to be free. Freedom in Christ. You know where the word free comes from? This is a totally off, off my notes just for a second. It just occurred to me. You know where the word free comes from? It's an old, the cognate of the word free is called pre, P-R-I-E, pre. And it comes from the word to love. We define freedom as do anything we want. I am a free person. I can do whatever I... Our kids say that. I am a free... I said that anyway as a kid. I am a free person. I can do whatever I choose. I want. Freedom and the word friends come from the same root. Isn't that cool? Freedom actually means you are free to choose whom you love. You're not free to do anything you want but you are free to give your affection to God. Freedom in Christ means you have total free access to let God work through you 
That's where the word comes from. It had there, 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 are, there are constraints to the word freedom. That's where we get the word friends from. Did that change anybody's idea of freedom? It sure did for me. Anyway, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but, and not watch, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. You are free to choose affections. You are not free just to do anything you want. You are free to love. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. That's the best definition of freedom I've ever seen, and it's in Scripture. Land of the free would change a little bit. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by, by each other. How many people still want some more patience? Be honest. It's okay. How many people would like their friends to have more patience? How many people have ever wanted patience at any time in their life? Oh, come on. Did you want a sermon on, on honesty? <laughs> patience. How do I get more patience? Oh, man, I'm trying so hard to be patient with you. Maybe if I just take, take a step back, or if I count to 10, or if I just breathe, I'll be patient. For how long? Until that person stops doing what that person is doing is usually. Our patience is usually limited by the behavior of those around us. Amen? If they do it too much, you have tried my patience. I, am, I now have a right to devour you. There was a time limit, and you crossed that line. And since I am a free person, I can do whatever I want, right? I was patient. I was very patient with you for a long time, but you finally pushed me too far. Am I the only person who has ever said or thought something like that? <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. You bite and devour each other. So obviously this is kind of dealing with this sort of topic. It's not what we get right. It's not that I was patient most of the time. I got it right. It's what I got right the wrong way that eventually stonewalls me and, I, and, and, and will eventually disintegrate me spiritually. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So the key here is walk by the Spirit. How do you do that? Hmm? There's, there, actually, well, let's we'll just kind of keep that. How do you do that? How do I walk by this? How do I know I'm walking by this spirit? So I say, walk by the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with one another. How many have sensed any sort of conflict in their life? So that you are not to do whatever you what? People used to, at one time, there are translations that imply that what you want are good things. I want to do right, but you know, I got this conflict in this flesh and I, and I mess up. I want to do right. If that's your way of looking at it, it means that the, even the Holy Spirit isn't powerful enough to impress you to live right. And I don't think any one of us believes that. Whatever we want is the uh, uh, misuse of the word freedom, isn't it? Freedom is not whatever I want. Freedom says I am free to love. I am free to connect. I am free to serve. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. To be under the law means that your actions, your life, you are somehow being condemned by your actions because they are no longer loving others as you love yourself. Amen? That's to be under the law. It's, it's, if fulfilling the law is to love your neighbor as yourself. Being under the law means you're not loving your neighbor as yourself. It's, it's really that simple. 
There are libraries and libraries making spirituality hard. There are books and books read it, or written on spiritual living that make it so confusing when all you need to do is walk by the Spirit. And we'll see how that happens. But the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, fractions, or factions, not fractions, they're okay. Factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is self-evident. But sometimes when it comes to how do I get more patience, we think that by getting more patience, is, is we, we just kind of can, 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 tense up and not do something, or we kind of lit back, or we, or we count to 10, or we've got a number of ways until our patience runs out. How can, and how can patience run out, runs out? How do you get more patience? I'm trying to be patient with you. I'm trying to be a patient person. But the fruit of the Spirit, now fruit is the byproduct of something, Right? fruit of the Spirit, the result of, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, which is patience. You cannot get more patience. There is not more patience out there. There's not more joy out there. There's not more love out there. You can't get more love. You can't get more joy. It's already there. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit working that transformation in you. There is always more spirit. Parents, you know how to give good gifts to your kids, right? If uh, if they ask for something, you're not going to give them a snake, right? That's Jesus. That was a a, kind of a quote. No, that's a paraphrase. Jesus, you know how you you know how to give good gifts to your kids? If if they ask you for a fish, you're not going to give them a snake, that's for, for a toy, you're not going to give them a, 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 a hot coal. You know how to good, give good, good gifts to your children. How much more will the Father in heaven give you the gift of the Holy Spirit when we ask? It's that simple. Ask, and you will receive an abundance of the Holy Spirit. You may not even know it. You won't feel it. it, it, it you may or may not. It's a simple ask. Spend time asking. Lord, continue to fill me, because you already have the Holy Spirit, by the way. There's not a person in here who does not have the Holy Spirit in their life. But sometimes we just simply ask for that manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, the fruit of that experience is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, all that stuff. It's that simple. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. You've already crucified the flesh. And since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. It's that simple. Today, make one resolution. I'm not going to try to get more joy in my life. I'm not going to try to get more happiness in my life. I'm not going to try to be patient. Go up to someone and tell them that. You know what? I'm not going to be patient. I'm not going to try to be more patient with you ever again. First off, you scare them and they'll, they'll be compliant. Because I am here for one thing, and that is to live out the Holy Spirit in me. Simple as that. Are you good with that? This is meant to be a little bit shorter because it's it's just that simple. Anything I add to it right now confuses the issue. So with that in mind, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again that our life is built on one thing, and that is asking. That our life is built on one thing as well, and that is receiving. And from that miraculous exchange, we gain love, joy, peace, and patience. And we thank you, Father, for that miracle. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.